Hello deepest dudes and dolls, I'm Caricatura and welcome back to my girly, pearly, and ever so twirly little review show, Very Slay, where we go over each and every one of main stage runway looks on RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars Season 9. And I have to say, this might just be my favorite episode of the entire season so far. I thought everyone knocked it out of the park in the challenge, did really, really well. And then on top of that, it was a really, really solid runway on a collective note. I cannot wait to be singing a lot of high praises for these designs, and I cannot wait to just dive into all the delicious little details in each and every one. Now, for those who don't know how this show works, when we go over these looks, if I think a look met the brief but didn't like blow my mind or anything, we give it an okay. If I think it is a real gem of a look, we give it a slay, and if I think it is merely a grain of sand in the oyster's mouth and has not yet turned into anything gorgeous and stunning, we give it an A. And it's all in efforts to find my weekly slay of the day, my favorite look of the episode, which will go head to head against our current reigning slate of the season, which is Plastic Tiara's Widow Weep For Me look from a few episodes back, and whichever look is in that final top spot by the end of the season, will get a full illustration by me whenever I get around to it. Someday, probably. We'll see. Definitely though. It'll happen, I promise. Now with all that out of the way, as always, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all those lovely little things. Stay tuned, exciting things are in development. Now let's talk about these looks. So the runway theme this week was Bring Back My Pearl, was a pearl themed runway look. Now starting off this episode, we have Plastic Tiara with this very clear, immediately recognizable Mugler reference, very Birth of Venus. I absolutely love this. The way the pearls are draped in the décolletage, absolutely gorgeous. The updo is incredible. Her mug is amazing as always. And just the overall scale and silhouette of this look is absolutely to die for. It's one of my favorite looks, I think, from her of the entire season, in all honesty. Like, this is just really sleek, really glamorous, really, really gorgeous, and quite timeless. So I'm going to be giving it a slay, obviously. Next up, in another timeless sort of look, we have Angeria, who's giving me very Ziegfeld Follies as the main point of reference with this look. It just has this like old world glam to it that I absolutely adore. And her mug is stunning. The look in general, the initial scale of the headpiece is gorgeous with the pearls on the top and the, just all throughout. But the real showstopper of this is the gown underneath. The pearl chains are placed perfectly, the feathers are placed perfectly, and I think the white feather trim on the sides could throw the proportions off, but for me this works because it cuts the body in just a specific way that it just really creates a beautiful silhouette, really really gorgeous look for her, one of my favorites that she's had all season. I'm absolutely going to give this a slide. Oh, Diva, next up we have Chanel, and last week I said I was starting to get a little disappointed by some of her looks, but this week, holy moly, this is by far my favorite Chanel look that we've ever seen across all three of her runs on Drag Race, season one, All-Stars one, and now this one. This is just so fucking stunning. This is the Howie B look. I love Howie B. This is just, it's so good. The scale of all the different pearls throughout the look, is really really great and there's something about the headpiece and the shoulders all of that this general silhouette it really gives me venus from uh persona 2. Uh, so this is a very particular nerdy reference but it kind of gives me that vibe so i'm very biased towards this but this was so far outside of what we've seen from chanel so far in a lot of ways when you break down the silhouette pretty basic it's a bodysuit with chaps and, you know but the signature Head pieces of Chanel, exaggerated shoulders. I think it's got a lot of the Chanel staples throughout this look. And the pearlescent fabric choices and parts, the blue contouring. It's the right amount of color. It really makes everything pop. This is absolutely stunning. So I have no choice but to also give this look a slay. I would give it a slay just for the headpiece alone. And next up, giving us black pearls, we've got Got Mitt, the bodysuit itself. This is a Diego Montoya. I love Diego Montoya. He's one of my favorite designers to ever do anything on Drag Race. The level of detail throughout that and the precision of where the details are placed in the embellishments, that's a very Diego Montoya thing. So to me, I immediately clocked that it was his work. So 
a big fan of that. The shoulder pads too, I think that's another thing he does quite a bit. That's a pretty signature Diego shape. I wasn't the biggest fan of the fabric choice for the base bodysuit, this kind of like stretch vinyl latex moment. It serves, it's great, don't get me wrong. But I just thought, it, I don't know, it just felt a little lacking comparatively from what we had seen so far. And I think that's just because this silhouette is so pared down compared to the other looks we've seen up to this point. Even though there's a headpiece and exaggerated shoulders like Chanel's, Chanel's look had a lot of shit going on with how big some of these pearls were. So it had a more exaggerated sense of scale than what this does. But I do think going with the black pearls is a really smart choice here. I love how it was incorporated in the makeup around the lips, along the cheek contour, around the eyes, the black sclera lenses. It works really, really well. I think this makeup is arguably the prettiest Gottmik has looked all season, I think. Even though it's the most alien, I think that's really the realm that Gottmik's makeup shines the most in. So I was a big fan of this as well. Gonna give this a slide. Next up, we have Roxy Andrews, who is giving us this body proportion diva in these pearl strands. Very burlesque. -y. I love the pearl wig. The pearl headpiece is stunning and gorgeous. And I saw a comment on Twitter about Roxy that I completely agree with. i sorry if you happen to watch this. I don't remember your name. But Roxy's proportions are not very classical hourglass for her body shape. But she knows exactly where to place everything, where to cut the garment in the right spot, where to put everything to really accentuate her silhouette in the most stunning ways. This to me is like elevation of season five Roxy. This is the thick and juicy girl. So gorgeous and it moves so beautifully and I love the pearls on the gloves, the drape of that as well. I just think this whole look is really stunning. It's another one that's really, really classic. It's giving pageantry. Her makeup is great as well. I think it's another one of my favorite mugs we've seen from her in this season. Just absolutely stunning, gorgeous. I'm gonna give it a slide. Even though it's a really simple silhouette, I think it is really successful. Next up, we have Georges. Who's giving us this little gold dress with some pearl embellishments? I think the pearls in the hair is the best part of this. The gown, it's pretty. It's pretty. But it is a little simple. I didn't notice that she had gloves at first. The color is not really it for me, but I do think of all eight of the looks this week, Georges's is the simplest, and I just was not the biggest fan of it uh, comparatively to everybody else. Is it a good look? Yes. Did it have pearls? Yes. And for that reason, it's going to get just an okay. Next up, we have Nina West in this look that's giving very Regency vibes, and this is also really, really stunning. I love the, the mask piece with this, how intricate that is. The hair, again, it's that really sculpted hair that I don't really like, but for this look, I think it works. The bodice on this dress is absolutely stunning. I love the rough collar. I love the pearl detailing through it. The sleeve placement is really flattering on her proportion wise. And I think giving her a little peplum just to further accentuate the hip because she's so big in the shoulders anyways, and then she's adding a lot of bulk between this huge collar and these huge puff sleeves. Having that little peplum at the hip is a really smart choice. The only thing I would change is I wish the skirt was more full. I wish it was more of a ball gown and not just like a straight down skirt. But other than that, I thought this was really good. This is another really solid mug from Nina too. I thought this was one of the prettier ones she's done on the season. So I'm gonna give her a slay this week too. And finally we have Vanjie who's giving us kind of a pinup girl, very 40s, 50s vibes with this. I love the shell shoulder headpiece situation, this little funnel around her. I think it's really cool. And the fabric choice they did for the lining on that catches the light in a really beautiful way. And it's a really simple silhouette. It's a bodysuit with some pearls on the hips, you know. It's a really simple design on the silhouette, but the real statement of this is this mug in the hair. The pearl detailing in the makeup is absolutely gorgeous, and the sculpt on this hair, to me, this is how you do a sculpt in a wig correctly, where it's got these really architectural moments, but it still looks like hair. And so for me, that is just, I think it's really successful. So I'm gonna give this a slay too. That's all the looks. It's time to pick my slay of the day. And I think it kind of goes without saying for me this week, it comes down to a couple of looks 
but the one that had the most wow factor comparatively to the rest of her package and this week on the runway has to be Chanel. So I'm gonna give Chanel my slay of the day for this episode. And now when we put it head to head against Plastiques, I think Plastiques look is objectively better. I find it more visually impressive. But when I think about what look could I make the coolest art out of, the second I saw Chanel's look, I knew I could turn out an incredible illustration off of that. So this is a tough one because I think I can do both looks justice and I think I can do both designers and both garments justice, but I think Chanel's look would be more fun because the more I thought about Plastique's look, as gorgeous of a piece as that would be, and as much as I know I would turn it out, I think I would get stressed out by it. And I want to do something that I think would be a little more fun for me uh, at the end of the day. So when we're going head to head, I'm going to advance Chanel's look to next week. This look was such a wow moment for me, for her over the season. And it is going to be one of the more memorable looks of the entire batch of looks we've gotten out of this season, in my opinion, when there's been a lot of really good ones, a lot of really good looks. So. I'm excited to see what we're gonna get next. And because it's a Lala Perusa, I'm sure it's gonna just be all performance looks the entire time, which is not exactly the most fun. Until next time, y'all, be sure to go out there, stay kind, stay queer, and make sure that your day is very slay. <laughs>